word. Uh, all right. I'll have another topic. And I want to... Look, I want to get the male perspective of this, right? Because... Um, Aren't we all male? Yes, but Emma's not here. So next so, week, I'm going to bring this... So so I'm going to bring this up again. Oh, oh. I'm going to bring this up okay. again. So I want to get the male uh, perspective of this. And then uh, next week when Emma comes on, I want to talk about it again and see what she thinks. Because, yeah. So so you want to get that female perspective. The female week. perspective. So um, I just learned about tran- transac- transaction. Oh, my gosh. Hang on a sec. I'll put it on the screen so that Alexander can uh, say the word. <laughs> <laughs> Before before you butcher it. No, no, it's not. Um, it's thing. Can Mate, you see that the top, yeah. the title? You're, you're, transactional. You're butchering skills. Yeah, transactional. Been out tonight, transactional. You know? I want to talk about transactional relationships, right? Meek Mill tweeted or whatever. He said shit should be a crime, um, and underneath zero tolerance for transactional relationships coming from Lenny S. I don't know who the hell that is. So I clicked into. What the hell is a what is a transactional relationship? Right? Um Jay-Z and, and Beyonce. it is it uh yes. So it, in any business a transactional relationship is focused on benefits. Generally, the people inside the partnership are thinking what the hell am I getting out of this? Okay. Um if you want to google trans uh, trans fuck transactional relationship to get a deeper meaning you have to look it up yourself because i only got one article up (laughs) but essentially when i read this i was thinking isn't isn't most marriages transactional like isn't there um uh wow yes but taking the love and romance out of it no, yep. no, no. The the love and romance, and then there's part of it that you have to you have to like give. You got to bring to the table a certain amount of financial support. Like uh, you have to bring uh, emotional support. You have to bring you have to bring a lot of support. It's just not. I thought when I read it, I was like, isn't that a relationship? So where the difference will be is yes, you're right. Like. All relationships are transactional to an extent. Um, but a transactional relationship now, that that terminology, if you're old school like us, is basically just a new new way of saying sham. So Sham? Oh. Remember sham marriages? No. Sham Let me look this up. You never heard of a sham is it a scam? It's like when someone marries someone to get a visa. Oh. Well that can be a sham marriage. Um, right, right, people, right, 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 right. people like celebrities where they they might get married because of the benefits of the appearance of them being married and what that leverages for both of them versus romantically involved so essentially right. transactional or sham it's the same as what you're talking like a traditional relationship but with the absence of the romance and love oh there is no um oh man T- typi- just, typically like right. t- I mean, you you could have a transactional where there is sort of an affection, but then that just makes it a normal relationship. Um, but you might even have a situation where you're actually like you really like each other, platonically, like you're really good mates. Yeah. Um, you get along really well, but there would just be benefits to you making it a relationship, and what you could leverage that way. Does a marriage? Event, like at some point transition into a transactional relationship like it started off that was the basis but at some time like does it go what can you do for me what can i do for you does it ever ever turn into that kind of relationship i like that the married man's asking the two non-married men <laughs> well i'm just exactly. asking from the from the I, single I, I, man I, I, perspective. I was thinking in my i was thinking in my head why is he asking us right, this question? I, like, shouldn't I he see, be asking himself? Because, like, okay, so if, <laughs> if if when we first started and there was we got together because it was love and like there was the emotion behind it, and then afterwards it came to a point where it's like, okay, 
like we have that that's the base that's our base now where do we go from here like that is that's that's good but now i have to like we have kids now so i have to focus more on providing for the family now so like that romanticism and all that kind of stuff it we should prioritize that but at the same time i got to make sure that certain levels are met like certain yeah but is the love still there yeah, yeah the love's still there but it's like well, the well with a transactional marriage there's no love it's all what can you do for me and what can i do for you that's the massive difference but the priority that's what i'm trying to get at the priority isn't the priority is to get Pro- priorities priorities will always change as long as the love is still there that's all that matters and how did i become the one CJ, talking about this cj giving the love advice because i don't think you fully Jeez. i don't think I, you fully let, understand the the like it. like when you say like as long as the love go is Alexander, still there school him <laughs> he's tired of i don't now. think <laughs> i don't think you fully understand it though like once the, there's certain I, I don't think i don't think you i, I don't think you understand it. You're, you're the only married one here uh, okay we should be asking you advice i'm trying i'm trying to mediate between you two i get where you're coming from and this by the way again coming from a man who's not married so i have no experience in this um i get where you're coming from dev and i get where you're coming from cj dev to your point yeah your initial foundation relationship has to be based on attraction and emotion which may develop into love has to be based on that otherwise it just is transactional from the get-go like if that's not what's drawing you together then it is transactional so right. if it's not okay. transactional if it is based off of emotion love all these things you don't it, you base it off of that and that is your largest priority because you don't know each other you don't you haven't lived with each other you haven't developed with each other to the point where other things become priorities but over time you do develop things which become priorities like your marriage which a marriage is beyond just look like that's an actual contract your kids they become a priority your careers they still have to be priorities and as you get older typically your careers become more a priority because you're more established in it um there's more direction and then you've got the fiscal responsibilities of taking care of each other because your money's tied up with each other your circumstances like your living situation is tied up you now think about retirement you want to make sure that that from a fiscal responsibility standpoint is set for both of you but to CJ's point, the reason that you do all of these things is for the base priority of the fact that you love each other. If that wasn't there, all these other things would still be a priority, but there's plenty of people who do those things with those priorities in life but are not together. They separate, but they still keep those priorities. Like, people who separate with a family still keep the priorities of needing to deal with their living situation, still keep the priorities of making sure that their kids are well taken care of, that the things are there for their kids. They still take care of their careers. Like, all these priorities still exist. But Mm. the love isn't there. They separate. So, what I think, where I do think a relationship can go from a traditional romantic into a transactional is if you prioritize the transactional side over love and stay together in that priority. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know the love's not there, but it's better for the kids or whatever. So yeah. you just stay together. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I think it's easy to slip into a transactional relationship as well. Yeah. Even if the love can potentially be there, it's not that there's any reason the love's not... Like sometimes the love's not there because one person was in, you know had infidelity or any, whatever it is but they just choose to stay together but sometimes the love can go away not go away but or yeah it can go away and i don't even think that's because that's the nature of how relationships evolve over time um but because it's really easy to ignore the effort it takes for that to be a priority the reason why like we get you know the the whole puppy dog phase you know, puppy dog phase, you go through that and you're really in love and all these kinds of things. It's because you puppy do dog, things. Puppy love? Puppy, puppy love, that's the one I meant, sorry. I was like puppy dog. Puppy dog. <laughs> puppy yeah. love phase. You, the reason why you go through that is because you do things which foster that. And the reason yeah. why that goes away is because you stop doing those things, not because... Yeah. But so don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. This is... I'm not... I'm just trying to get it from the perspective. Like, because... 
my outlook on uh, on uh, on life is totally changed. So my priority is always always family first, and everything else is secondary. But like Alexander said, there are situations where they go from like love was the base, and like I I agree with you, Siege. As long as love is there. But sometimes people change from a relationship to a transactional relationship. And Alexander brought some stuff up that why that happens. But I wonder if people know if they're aware of it being a transactional and they're just lying to themselves or they're just they're scared of what's out there or like that's that's the point I was trying to bring up. When people go, they live in a transactional uh, relationship and they don't know it. I um, don't think I think you know. I think you know. And the reason I'll give another I'll yeah. give another example why I think you know. To me, it's the same as people who are unhealthy to the point where it's impacting them like like medically impacting them or something. You you don't get to that point unaware. You can slip into it. I yeah. I but don't you know. don't you don't like you don't wake up one day and go, "Oh shit, what the hell?" Like I was running twenty miles yesterday. Like how did this? Like you don't mentally just. I'm not saying that you don't prioritize it or don't like push it back in your mind, but yeah. every single day you're aware that you're not doing the things that you, maybe you used to do or the things that you should do. Like every day you know that that's a thing. You may for a split second know it and then purposely forget it but you yeah. know like it's not a shock that that's I, the way your life has gone i agree with like people on this podcast alexander but i don't know if everyone is aware i really don't i really don't because like i don't know i just i see it so often um like with old men and they man they, they it's the story repeats itself like they go, oh, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't take my chances. Like one minute I was running twenty k's, like you said. The next minute I'm sixty five. I don't know what happened in my life. And then they—that's what I mean. I don't know if they're aware. Do you believe? I don't that? know if a lot of people are aware. Yeah, I actually do, Alexander. I really, really do. I want to push back on that because. Yeah. Oh, push back, sir. Push back. I, <laughs> I don't think. I don't push think back. that <laughs> specifically. Like talking about health. I yeah. don't think going from someone who's active to 20, 40 years later being someone who's like, whoa, what happened? I don't think that's got anything to do with awareness. I think it's got a lot to do with denial. Like, mm -hmm. I think denial's rampant among the general denial population. Denial of awareness? Del denial of awareness, yeah, 100%. Like, I think people are aware. Isn't that the same? But n no, because denial is an active, like... In order to be in denial, you have to be aware. You can't deny something you're not aware of. No, you make it a habit of denial, so it never ever enters your conscience. But th even if you make, know. even if you make I, it a I habit, can't talk about a... that denial is still an awareness. That's what I mean. Like, in order for there to be denial, there has to be awareness. You can't deny no, something I'm, you're not aware no, of. No, at the beginning, I understand. At the beginning, you're saying you deny it; it becomes a habit, and then it never enters your mind again. So it's not an awareness anymore. You've just put it into a box. So it's you're not aware of it anymore. So it doesn't enter your consciousness anymore. You've made it a habit not to think about that anymore. And at that time you were aware. And but once you put it in that box, it doesn't become an awareness anymore. In concept, in theory, yes, in practicality, no. Because health and fitness impact you literally on a daily basis. Like yeah. like we you get to the top of the stairs and you're out of breath you're aware like you know why you're out of breath you can't even even if you've built in that mm. denial you can't get away from it the aches and pains mm. you feel yeah like, but there's so many there's so many things your body screams at you with to let you know mm. what the fuck are you doing yeah yeah but the top the original topic was not about fitness it was about your emotional tie to someone else no so but what i i'm suggesting to me that slipping away that that an awareness that love is going and you're moving in trans transactional is similar to health and fitness to me. Like I reckon it'd be a lot easier to slip into a transactional relationship than 
not noticing your fitness because with your like a, you might slip into a transactional relationship and not know it because just both parties are busy working kids and doing things like that so you haven't got time to think about it correct but it's the- well with your physical with, with, with your physical fitness if you walk down the street and you're puffed out of breath there's a cause and effect you notice you're out of breath Gee, can I just pause you the podcast? You might not have time to notice. Can I pause the podcast? Okay. <laughs> bro, that is the most... Bro, you k- keep going. Because that... If I can, I'm going to mark that down. That's going to be in the highlight reel. The way you fucking use cause and what? effect was fucking brilliant. Keep going. I used it correctly, didn't I? Uh, yeah, 100%. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry I broke your fucking train of thought. I... I- I lost my channel for <laughs> to I mean look to to the reason why I call it a similarity and the reason I get what you're saying in terms of the physical response that you know with health and fitness you don't have that clear indicator in in a relationship when it comes to love but to me there are other things that scream at you for example uh, what let you know that you're in a transactional for example if you're ever doing anything in a relationship you're like why the fuck am I doing this or if you're not happy, or like one of like love counteracts a lot of things. Like mm. there are a lot of things that you forgive yeah, because but, of love, but, and when you realise that you're not forgiving them, again, it's not that you're. I'm not suggesting that you sit there with a pencil and you mark it and go, <laughs> this this thing lets me know that I'm not in love. But all the things that let you know you're not in love, you're aware of. You just haven't put two and two together. Mm. Yeah, so you so you're not aware of it if you all haven't put two and two together. But you are aware, like you're aware of all the markers. I'm. It's it's for me. It's when people suggest that. Oh, like I just didn't realize that we weren't in love. It's like no, no, no. You realize you just didn't say it. Like you, everything that let you know no, you, you were aware you, of. You you had a conscious maybe, awareness of all the different but signals. Maybe maybe subconsciously you realize. But you weren't able to put two and two together or just be naive about it. Or, as I said, you might just be busy and unable to... Because we live busy lives, majority of us. Like, Ernest has got three kids. He hasn't got time to think about, oh, man, do I love, do I love Emma today? Sometimes they're, they're busy with the kids, activities, and things like that. They haven't got that personal time for themselves. I also don't buy into the... Reflection. I, I don't... I don't buy into the idea of people don't reflect. When does a person of multiple children have time to reflect? I believe everyone reflects. A- a- the, everything that a- everything they do, as soon as that child is born, is for the child. So I- they go to work because they love because they want their children to eat. No, I get they it. I get go it. To work because they want their children to have good education. I get it. They stop doing things for each other, and they both start doing things for their children. I believe, though, from a point of reflection, and this is, I think there's a way of processing reflection, and there's ways of paying attention to reflection, and there's a ways of um, understanding what to do with reflection that I think the vast majority of people don't ever learn and don't engage with. But I believe the vast majority of people spend more time in reflection than they do doing anything else in their life. I think I think Alexander I, I think Alexander's got a point there, Siege, because like um, not and it's proven. It's I think it's proven. Like not many people live in the moment, so you're either living in the past or you're thinking about the future. Because it's very hard to live in the moment. So what he's saying is, is 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 right. You're either being reflective or you think what's what's thinking about in the future. What is that? Is there a word for thinking about in the thinking in the future? Anyways, it's either you're one of the two. You're either being reflective or you're thinking about in the future. So, so what you're saying is this. If you're planning your future mm. and the person is not there, then you no longer love the person and you know about it. But if that person is still there, that means you're still planning a future with them. I'm lost. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> say, say it again. Who's okay, who's where? If, if, if you're reflecting, right? Yeah. On the future, if you're planning your future and you still have your partner with you in your plans, mm. 
does that mean it's, it's still no longer you don't know that it's turned to transactional so, so i don't know if you're this is the point of the awareness part so like so, that's why i'm a bit with the awareness like because i said people live in the past or in the future the awareness is very very hard because you got to be in the moment of that time to uh, to be aware of what's happening so because most of us live in the past or in the future that's why it's hard for me to say that people are aware of what's happening to them and i agree with cj when he says that it happens in the subconscious because we we replay it so it's not at that instance that you're aware it's fed through the subconscious and then maybe reflecting when you're driving to work two days later or or like three weeks later that's when the penny drops yeah, so with the whole awareness, it's it's so hard because okay, we live I, in such a busy I'll a buy busy into that, that time frame in terms of like when I'm talking about people, uh, are, they know the markers and they see these things and they process the markers, but they don't necessarily connect the dots. I don't mean it like the moment that they fall out of love. Yeah, right. I right. mean, in general, um, what I mean is I don't think you go five years down the line and go holy shit we're not in love we haven't been in love for right, five right. years like i think that happens but i yeah. don't think people in that situation didn't know that was happening i think they've known that's been happening for a long time they just have refused to acknowledge it yeah yeah because i think saying <sighs> it is a whole different yeah, I, I, kind of fish. like yeah. once you yeah, saying I, it makes I, it real I, I i agree with that yeah so i, I you know yeah, maybe they just don't realize that they've fallen out of love. So just like confession, trying, just like confession, this was part like one. Ignorant. And then confession part two will be next week when Emma comes on and we talk about transactional relationships. Transactional. Jesus, what's confession part one? The B-side word.